In this video, I'm gonna to explain to you how to release and follow through correctly. You know, I've already described what the ideal release and follow through would be, but not necessarily how to get there, especially if you're struggling with your release and follow through. You know, some people have a two part release where they release the string and then they follow through and it's actually a two part movement and not a fluid single movement. So what I'm going to do in this video is explain to you how to get into this nice clean release and follow through that you really should have. So I've been coaching a fair bit lately, and I had a friend come down from where I grew up and flew down here to Florida to work with me, and he had a two-part release where he would aim a good, you know, look decent at full draw, and then it would be a release, a slight pause, and then a mimicked follow-through. It wasn't really a true release and follow-through, and it wasn't super smooth. And I worked with him and finally found out what was going on, so I decided that I really should spend some time explaining to you how to do a proper release and follow through because it was a little difficult to get through to him and uh, it wasn't because of him it was because there really isn't a really good explanation of how you get this clean one piece release and follow through motion quickly before i go into talking about that i want to explain to you what a good release and follow through looks like and describe to you a bit more about those things in case you haven't checked out my form series yet I will uh, put links in the description below, plus a card at the top up there for you to check out. It's a playlist, and I take you through my steps of how I shoot my style of shooting. Uh, but quickly, let's go over release and follow through. So release is an action. It is something that you do. You actively will be opening your fingers or letting the string cut through your fingers when you let go of the bow, or let go of the string, rather. Uh, and follow through is actually a reaction, not an action. So what does that mean? It means that when you follow through, the way you are following through and what happens through that motion of follow through, it tells you everything else that you have built up into the shot. The type of tension that you've built up into the bow, the way you're pulling back, the direction you're pulling back, and where and how you're adding tension. So the follow through motion is a reaction. It tells you everything about the shot, how you built it up, and not necessarily a movement that you consciously do it is something that just happens due to the forces of the bow exerting on your body your body reacts to what the bow is doing or you how you're trying to control the bow so a good true follow-through would look something pretty similar to this it's basically a one single motion it is fluid and it just happens there is nothing that i am adding to my body no tension no specific movement that I'm actually trying to do. I'm actually just letting my body do its own work. So I'm here at 20 yards and I'm gonna string walk because I'm shooting my bare bow here today. Um, but it applies for any style of finger shooter. It does apply to compound shooters with release, but uh, basically all the work's done for you. So you don't really even need to worry about that because the release uh, should fire as a surprise if you're doing it correctly and a follow through will be, you know, pretty much self-explanatory in a compound. But finger shooters, fingers recurve, compound, Olympic style recurve, whatever it is, if you're shooting fingers, uh, this video is definitely for you. So this is what a good uh, release and follow through would look like, a single movement. So it's pretty fluid, pretty dynamic, and it just happens. You'll notice that there is no hitch where I release and then I move. I can try to do that. It's going to be very, very difficult for me to do and difficult for me to mimic because I have shot so many arrows doing it with this type of movement. So I'm going to do my best. And unfortunately, I basically have to punch the bow. I have to tell myself to release and release all tension. So it's gonna be ugly, so prepare yourself for that. And I can't do it, honestly. You can see as I go to release the string, my body automatically starts moving back. I then have to pause myself and then move back again. So it's, I really can't do it. I've tried, I really, really tried. It's really, really difficult for me to not release properly because I've shot so many arrows this way and it's just natural. It's something that my body wants to do. 
So because it is so difficult for me to not do it correctly, because I've done it correctly for so long, I know what it's like to not be able to do it correctly if you've done it incorrectly for so long. It's very much apples to apples as far as that type of comparison is concerned. So that's why I'm making this video to help you through this. So after working with my friend, I was really trying after a couple of hours, trying to get his release to be nice and dynamic and the follow through to just happen. And there was a lot of back and forth. There was a lot of try this, try that, think of this, try to feel that, talk to yourself about this. Specifically, one of the really important ones that can help people is having the concept of the shot does not end until you finish the shot. And finishing the shot does not happen when you let go of the string. It does not happen when the clicker clicks. It does not happen until you are finished with your follow through. So if you have the perception of, I must continue to pull against my stops if I'm shooting a compound, against the tension that I feel at full draw while shooting bare bow, or trying to get through the clicker if you're shooting Olympic style recurve, that tension that you have at full draw must continually happen and be uninterrupted until you finish the shot. Now finishing the shot is up to you. It can be like finger to the back of your neck, finger to your shoulder, a whole bunch of different things. For me, it is the feeling that I feel back here in my back, specifically right underneath my scapula, what I feel going on there, how when I release and follow through, I can no longer move anymore. So for me, if I were to face this way so you can see my back, release and follow through until this happens. Where I can no longer elbow around and behind me and have my arm hinging around and behind me. Once I hit that maximum range of motion, that's when my shot ends. You don't want it to be when the clicker clicks or when you let go of the string, because if that happens, you're going to relax the tension in your arm that you've built up, and your bow arm actually, and you're going to relax it right when you let go of the string, and that's where this static release and then follow through comes in, or a pluck, or a collapse, or any of those things come into play when you are not trying to end the shot when you can no longer move. So that's an easy way to really start the process is to have this kind of picture, this kind of process, or this bit of uh, concept in your head because it will be allow you to finish the shot more easily. Now, if you already have that I idea down and you understand what that means, as my friend did who came down and it made no difference to his release and follow through, then this next bit hopefully will help you. What I found after working with him was he had too much focus on aiming and not enough on the technique. Now, he was shooting a style of archery that does require a bit more aiming to it than Barabo does an Olympic style recurve. You know, as I've professed in my videos in the past, the primary focus should always be on form when you're shooting an Olympic style bow. Form will allow the arrows to group and you can move your sight or adjust your crawl or whatever it is to get your group in the middle. Now, when you're shooting other styles or you're shooting up close here, uh, you know, aiming is a bit more important that I've discussed in the past, but the primary focus still must be on technique and form. Because what I saw happening was he was too distracted by the aiming, he had too much conscious brain focus on the aiming technique part to where he would release, not move because he would end all the tension and go back on those old habits and then fake it with a secondary movement of follow through even though there was none especially in the beginning as a developing archer or as you're trying to change these form changes you must only think about technique you do not want to worry about aiming so very much obviously if your sight pin is way off several targets over you need to let down and start over but if your sight pin or your arrow or whatever your point of reference is close then all you need to do is primarily focus on the technique and allow the aiming to happen really burn a hole in the target with eye focus, how you should be aiming, how I've already explained. I'll have links in the description below for that as well as a card at the top up there in case you want to check out how I aim my Olympic style recurve. But the aiming is secondary. The primary focus is on form, not on the aiming. The aiming is important, it is relative, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Your body, as a finger shooter, can do a lot of really, really crazy, small, minute adjustments at the very last second. It will make small corrections if your sight pin's slightly off or your torque is slightly too much or something like that. And your body will make these small, minute corrections right at the last second to throw that arrow into the middle. You know, not with English, like you're trying to throw your bow arm because that's a conscious move, but 
the small little stuff that your body can do to adjust the impact point is actually quite amazing. I've shared a few stories in the past about that and uh, you know I've had some shots where my sight pins in the black low at the Olympic Games when I let go and because I pushed my tension in direction and had my intention and my form to drive that arrow in the middle of the target in the 10 ring even though my sight pin was this far off at 70 meters I still shot a 10 and it was incredible and I guarantee it works when done properly. So especially during this first bit of change really focusing more on what you're doing here inside of you what you're feeling what you're thinking what your perception is and less on the aiming what would really really help is going to blank bail coming to full draw closing your eyes and then thinking about finishing the shot and you can either talk to yourself about finger to neck or go until you can't anymore or you can think about the feeling what it feels like to have that back be fully locked what it think about what it feels like to have that finger to your neck or whatever it may be it's up to you however you would like to do it but uh, you know there's two different ways it's either talking to yourself or thinking about a feeling generally most people fall into the, those two categories so that's a great thing to think about while you're at blank bail with your eyes closed really getting the entirety of the feeling down and trying to ingrain this primary focus of technique over aiming and then It'll be very similar to progressing through target panic where people suggest to start very close at a big target where you can't miss and slowly progress back. So it's a similar progression to that where with your eyes closed, your shots may start breaking more correctly. And then as you open your eyes, you may find yourself having difficulty with the follow through. If that's the case, go back to your eyes closed and then you'll slowly progress forward. So you'll eventually open your eyes, okay. Then you'll pick a dot, maybe draw a dot on a piece of paper or 12 dots if you have 12 arrows for blank bail up close where it'd be impossible to miss that dot, but it gives you something to start to aim at. And that ability to start aiming is going to start distracting you from the thoughts of thinking about the actual form that you're trying to do. And then as you notice that you falter and your form starts to go bad, go back a step start to go back to where your eyes are closed or go back to blank bail or come back another five meters further or something along that line because you'll definitely notice you'll have the ability to have a good release and follow through when there is no focus on the actual aiming but as you start distracting yourself with aiming you start distracting yourself when the wind's blowing and you're really trying to fight it you'll notice your old habits will start to creep back in and this two-part release and follow through will come back into place so it's really going to take some time. It's gonna take effort on your part to really spend the time and try to progress forward so you can have this ingrained primary focus on technique and aiming secondary. And then eventually, like, you, like I am right now, I can aim all I want. I can even try to have a bad release as I tried earlier, and I can't do it because I focused so much on the technique first that it's truly ingrained into my subconscious and it just happens without me even trying. And eventually you can get to that if you really, really push forward and give an honest effort and spend the time just like I have to focus on the technique as primary, aiming and all those other things are secondary. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, consider hitting the subscription button and the notification bell, as well as the like button. I would appreciate it. Also, please consider supporting my channel if you head to my website, jakekaminski.com. There'll be info and links on Patreon, apparel, books, and equipment sales, PayPal donate button, a PO box to send things to. And above all else, please share this video because there's no better advertising than word of mouth.